this episode of Art Loft, we present Performing for God, Church by the Glades in the Millennial Era. I think the ma majority of the crowd's reaction is they're, they're truly amazed at what we do here. A documentary on Miami Marine Stadium. Virginia Miller from Artspace Virginia Miller Gallery. Eliza Gonzalez from the Coral Gables Museum. Mitchell Kaplan from Books and Books. And it's Gallery Night in Coral Gables. It's all ahead in this episode of Art Loft. Funding for Art Loft is made possible by Friends of Art, Friends of South Florida PBS, the Josephine S. Lizer Foundation, the City of Coral Gables, the Lilly Endowment, and Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. Support for Art Loft was provided by a grant from the Coral Gables Community Foundation. This project is sponsored in part by the State of Florida, Department of State, Division of Cultural Affairs, and the Florida Council on Arts and Culture. Hi, my name is Jumani Anambi, and from Gallery Night in Coral Gables, this, this right here, is Art Loft. We're at Art Space Virginia Miller Galleries with none other than Virginia Miller. Now, you're a, a legend in the art world, huh? <laughs> well, that's. I guess that means you're getting older. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, we're we'll talking about the gallery, but this is the Friday... Gables Gallery Night. Gables Gallery Night, because you know that because... Uh, back, it started in 1980. There were about three or four galleries at that time and they all opened on different nights. So I thought, well, if we could get them to open on the same night, then we could have an art event, we could publish it in the calendar, and we could draw more people to the Gables, because in those days, you know, it was very sleepy at night. Everybody left, and there was very little nightlife in Coral Gables. So your gallery opened a little bit before that, right? The gallery opened in Coconut Grove in 1974. We opened here in 1981. Wow, and it's so fresh. Like, you just keep it really fresh and new and vibrant. It Thank you. Really, yeah, Thank you, you come in and you're like, oh. They must have just opened. It's just, it has that enthusiasm, you know? Yeah, That's thank nice. you very much. Yeah, in 1981, this was the largest gallery in probably South Florida, maybe all of Florida, 4,000 square feet. Um, the galleries, when we opened in 1980 to 85, there was, uh, the galleries were open. In 85, everyone closed except my gallery. So it was very lonely for five years. And then in 1990, some of the gallery, new galleries began to move in. And um, I never lost my desire to start gallery, Gable's Gallery up again. Right. And so when they started moving in, I would talk with them and say, we've got to open on the same night. We've got to relaunch Gable's Gallery night. And they, but they were spread out over a mile and it wasn't within walking distance like it used to be when it, in 1980, early 80s. So I went to the city you and- You saw trolleys too? Pardon? You got the trolleys going yeah, too? Yeah, <laughs> and said 19, <laughs> so in 1991, January of 91, it's, we relaunched Gable's Gallery night. And that event was a magnet for other galleries to move to Carl Gables. Wow, that's really cool. Thank you. Next time I'm on the trolley, I'm gonna think about you. Well, that's good, I'm glad <laughs> to hear it. <laughs> um, we have some great galleries in Carl Gables, um, and they are still spread out, and the city has been amazing in supporting the galleries and gallery night. And they provide uh, trolleys, a continuous shuttle. We show international art, but with an emphasis on Latin American and uh, Chinese. 
this is an exhibition that we opened about four months ago. It's great. It's, and it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I like sitting. Thank I think you so much. Color. Yeah, you know. And yeah, the beautiful. artist is Venezuelan American. He was um, an architect and worked on large projects in Miami. And he gave it all up ten years ago to paint full time. Oh wow! And he is totally dedicated. I mean, a master colorist, and the compositions, when you look around the room, their compositions are so unique and they keep changing, and there's no nothing that looks the same. He's always pushing the envelope. I've always tried to bring new things to the community, introduce new art that hasn't been done here before. Right. So we did African, we did Indian art, we did Australian Aboriginal, um, we did so many things after 45 years. It's Back in the 90s, the galleries, as I said, were a magnet to bring in more galleries and more business to the Gables because th they were showing mostly, I would say, in most cases, all Latin American art. So we became the Latin American the Center for Latin American Art, really one of them at least in the world, because if you went to each country, they would show art from their country. Whereas you could come to Carl Gables and you could see art from every country in Latin America and Central America, all in one place. You've been through enough turns and changes and you're still here and you keep bringing it back, so. I kind of want to follow you. You know what I mean? <laughs> At the end of the day, who's still here? You over, you know, Virginia Art Space, Virginia Miller Gallery is uh, still rocking. It's a lot of hard work yeah. and it's a passion. Yeah. It's something, if you love it, it's your passion and you make it work because right. it's your life. If you don't know, boom, here she is, Virginia Miller. Awesome. So thank you. <laughs> thank uh, you. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure it's very you. kind. Yeah. Thank you. It was an honor. I enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Gallery night is definitely a time to get out and celebrate in Coral Gables. Church by the Glaze is redefining religion for the 21st century. Their rock concert inspired performances are unforgettable. Now join us as we learn more about the art of this unique type of performance. Yo, check it. Hey, if this your first time at Church by the Glades, welcome. My name is David Hughes, and uh, for almost, gosh, 20 years, I've been the pastor of Church by the Glades in South Florida, Coral Springs area, Broward County. I can't teach people until we get their attention. So we work really, really hard, and people today are so busy and so distracted that we want church to be exciting, crazy, inspiring, and we will get your attention. In fact, we have a promise at Church by the Glades, you will not fall asleep in our church. Every seven days there's a Sunday. And every seven days we're delivering the same message, the gospel. You know, God loves you, he has a plan for your life, and we've got to find a way to repackage it, make it interesting. I mean, we're always recruiting volunteers, people who are excited to be a part of what we're doing, vocalists, musicians, um, I mean, even dancers, anybody who, who's an artist in, in any capacity that we can put on stage, we're looking to recruit those people, see if they want to be a part of what we do. For us, we don't worship the arts, we worship God, but we use the arts to help bring people to God. We just try to be creative, so production values matter to us, so whether it's the quality of our, our song or visuals or video or dance, um, just making church a, a predictably unpredictable experience, which is not the norm. We're in South Florida where people tend not to go to church. So we just changed our mentality and started thinking, okay, people don't go to church, what environments do they go to? And so we thought about concerts and clubs. So our church has a bit of a vibe that feels probably more like a concert. I started coming here maybe 2007 or 2008. And what I immediately loved was that the, the presentation of the gospel and how um, creative they were. I was not sure if I was in a concert or not. <laughs> Our music, it's, it's sacred as well as what you might call secular. Uh, we try to start where the congregation or the audience, wh where they live. If you hear your favorite song um, that you've heard on the radio and you hear it in church, 
immediately you're disarmed and you're like, oh my gosh, I love that song. It's being performed so well, there are all these lights. And already the folded arm attitude that you might have come in with, you drop the hands and then you're open to hearing what Pastor David has to, to bring. We're able to allow biblical principles to kind of be attached to it, that when people leave, they leave with a new meaning and a new purpose. I think the ma majority of the crowd's reaction is they're, they're truly amazed at what we do here. The production here, the, the, the lighting, the sound, the singers, it's just all the talent here that we have. When, when we all come together, it, it always turns into something so spectacular that, you know, you, sitting in the crowd, like, you have no choice but to just be taken back by what you see. Performing in front of an audience this size, uh, to be honest, I've, I've gotten a little used to it, but I do remember when I first started, this, this was probably the, the biggest audience I had ever performed in front of. It's, it's nerve-wracking. <laughs> I mean, that's to, to say the least. Uh, but, you know, once, once, once we're out there and once the adrenaline starts rushing through, like, it's turned that nervousness into adrenaline and just, you know, push through it and it always comes out awesome. church is multi-generational, but we're heavy with young people. Um, Twenty-somethings and younger are probably our fattest demographic. Uh, as we program, we, we think through where they are in life, what they're dealing with. Uh, social media is a huge part of that world, so we leverage that as much as we can. And then I'll post on social media and I'll get a message from a friend I went to high school with and he's like, that's your church? Are you sure? Are you sure that's a church? That's not a church. And I'm like, dude, that's my church. Come check it out. And when they come through the doors, again, their mind is blown. Their eyes are open to what church can really be. You've got to be willing to change, you know, not the message, but basically the way it's delivered, the way it's packaged, so that somebody else like me, somebody who's young, who's not necessarily interested in old school or traditional ways, can see that there's, you know, there's something, there's something amazing about this, this gospel. We're here at the Coral Gables Museum with Chief Curator Eliza Gonzalez. Now this is a beautiful place. I mean, the architecture, the, the, the programming is awesome. Tell us a little bit about what's going on here. So um, in relation to the architecture, we're actually a historic building. Uh, it was a WPA project uh, and it used to be the old police and fire station for the city of Coral Gables. What you see here, it's all original coral rock. And tonight we have our gallery night. It's kind of like our museum's open house. So we open up to the community and we're free. Uh, so you can, anyone can just stop on by and take a look at the galleries and our exhibitions. And we have live music and vendors and whatnot. So it's a good time. So this is a nice place for the community to kind of get together here in Coral Gables. Yes, yes. Especially on gallery night, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. really nice uh, museum just nestled here, right in Coral Gables. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we're right yeah. in the downtown. So, so how, how long have you been participating in Gallery Night? The museum has been around, or we opened up in 2010, 2011. Um, so at least since, like, you, since, since opened. we've opened, oh, I believe, okay. I right. believe so, right. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's always been like kind of a, a nice anchor for me opening a new museum, mm -hmm. people to come by. So Gallery Night kind of like helps jumpstart the awareness of probably probably help jumpstart the awareness of people knowing you were here. Right. Yeah, it's welcome. a it's a good time and it's a great way to welcome the community into our into our doors. Right. And it's a citywide thing too as well because we do have a few galleries around. So the city kind of uh, pushed that initiative. Um, so they have a trolley system and the trolley goes around like a special route on gallery nights right. and it'll take you to all the like art spots. You know, I've walked around, I love the building, I love what's going on here. What do people usually marvel at the most? Um, I would say it would, it would be the building. We are very, we're, we're very unique. We used to be a completely different thing, the police and fire station, and now we're like a museum that has like art and cultural activities. So, um, and you can still see the remnants of its old purpose in the new, in its new function. So you'll see like the, at the entrance of our galleries, we'll have like the original um, cell doors. Wow. So you guys really make sure you touch upon everybody in the community and everybody's being served. Yeah, we're also a community, we're, we also kind of think of ourselves as a community center and that's actually what we kind of are. We're also the information center for Coral Gables. So, I mean, you can't not have the community as part of your your day-to-day. -day. Well, that is the community. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's what museums do too. They bring the community together. So. Yeah, ta nice tagline. Yeah. Coral Gables Museum. 
bringing the community together. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can have it. It's all yours. Okay. okay. Pleasure. Likewise. Thanks for talking, and uh, this is awesome. Cool. I love it. Enjoy. All right. My name is Jean Luen Yang, and I'll be reading from volume three of my Secret Coder series. Any, where have you been? Your mother and I have been worried sick. Coach Sanchez came here specifically to watch you play, and it's already halfway through the first quarter. Frankly, Any, I'm disappointed. A player of your caliber ought to take the game more seriously. And frankly, Coach, you all are in terrible danger. Giant flying laser turtle. Everybody needs to be out of that gym before they get laser blasted to smithereens. Any of these friends of yours, sorry mom, but we have to figure this out. Coders, let's huddle. They're not gonna believe us. We have to stop Dr. One Zero on our own. How much time we got? I don't see the giant flying laser turtle yet, but I bet it'll be here soon. We're at Books and Books where gallery night is in full swing. As you can see, people love this bookstore. Another local gym is the Miami Marine Stadium in Virginia Key. Now, what you're about to see is the most beautiful line by filmmaker Gaspar Gonzalez, a stunning documentary which presents the stadium's history from the point of view of its architect, Ilario Candala. Enjoy. Miami was quite different from the way it is today in 1960. It was definitely seasonal and definitely a tourist city. They loved racing, they loved boating, they loved all of it, anywhere from sailboats to powerboats, etc. But there was nowhere, anywhere in the United States, a facility designed specifically only to watch power races. So the idea came about to, the, to creating this facility Something that when you look at it, would have been recognized as being of Miami. All of this was marsh land. And all of this land was excavated. And the fill from this land was actually placed, deposited right here on the land side of the stadium before the stadium was built. So here's the stadium where my hand is. Here is the perimeter of the actual race course. This sketch is very telling because it shows the profile of the stadium. It's a very rough sketch, but it shows the profile, it shows the land, the outline. From this point to about this point is over the water. This portion is the land side. This is a very high, large roof with a large overhang. It's a 65 foot overhang from here to here over the seating area. Part of modernism was the use of concrete. The fact that concrete being something you can mold, but that's where the roof of the stadium came about. It's mimicking the waves on the bay, the shape of the sails on the bay. The community at large liked it so much that they made it theirs. They took ownership of the facility for concerts, for events, for religious services, all of that. In 1992, Hurricane Andrews came over and visited us, and the stadium was closed as a result of that visit. The city at the time thought that this was the opportunity to try to maybe recreate that land for development. They thought this was the opportunity to tear the stadium down. But the stadium saved itself. It said, I'm strong enough to withstand the test of time and withstand even the test of men. When I look at the stadium today, all kinds of emotions come through. I was 28 years old when I designed the stadium. I was a young architect, working in a very young city, creating an infant of a facility. So this creation had many, many layers. And it was a way of celebrating the most beautiful line, which is the point at which the land and the sea kiss. Probably the stadium, as I look back, is the single most significant building that I've ever done. 
I feel that I'm very privileged because I had the privilege of designing in the first place. And then I had the privilege 50 years later to hopefully rebuild it again. But I think we need to think about that. Welcome back to Gallery Night in Coral Gables. I am here with Mitchell Kaplan. He is the owner, founder of the Books and Books, the literary mecca to South Florida. All right, so can I say that? You can say that. All right, because this is, I mean, my family loves this place, we love this place, this is amazing. So, how long have you been in Coral Gables? Do you know, this is my 36th year in Carl Gables. Wow. And for a Miami Beach boy, where I went to school and where I grew up, it's kind of unusual that I ended up in Carl Gables, actually. But I love it. With Coral Gables, you have a lot of uh, arts out here, the liter li literary arts. So yeah. You are the, the, the master of that. And then you have the visual arts and music and things like that that happen in the area. Well, you know what's really interesting is Carl Gables, when I started this in 1982, Carl Gables was a lot sleepier than it is now. In fact, all of Miami was a lot sleepier than it is now. And believe it or not, there were no gallery nights in any community in South Florida back at that in those days. Wow. And Carl Gables the ga there was a, had a lot of galleries here. And so all the gallery owners got together and said, let's do this thing called gallery night, right. which had been happening in some other cities. And that was probably the mid 80s, believe it or not. So we've been doing this a very, very long time. Uh, the first Friday of every month. Right. And it's gone on to become something really, really special. Most of the galleries are still here. Some of them have moved, moved to uh, other communities, other parts of Miami. But I think that the genesis of the art revival really, believe it or not, started here in Carl Gables. And you're like the kind of the anchor. Stop. Well, we're, we're a bookshop, but we, we've been here so long that we really are one of the oldest independent businesses that are still here in Carl Gables. And as our business began to grow and the events that we have done began to grow, and as we got a cafe, this has become kind of a center point to what happens in the Gables, particularly during gallery night. And what we really believe in is, the, and what this, what this art, uh, you know, for the first Friday does, is the whole idea of community. Mm -hmm. What it really is is about having a community that turns out where you can see your neighbors, you right. can hang out with them, you can bump into people you haven't seen in a while, and experience culture at the very same time, which is the beauty of what these things are. And you can't do it on the internet. Right. which is even better. Which I think is <laughs> awesome that you, no, no really, that you're here with this, this great bookstore. I mean, their kids section is awesome. I, I go back there and I'm picking out things for my daughter. You know, so you really get the young people involved in being at a bookstore. Yeah. Enjoying, and pulling out different books, seeing different things that might interest you. That on the internet, you almost have to go, know exactly what you're looking for. And you still don't have that. There's that, something tangible exactly. about holding the books. And what, part of our mission, which is obviously the mission of you, is to generate the next generation of readers. Right. And we can create this kind of community of people who care more and are more empathetic right. about other people in a community. So there's a kind of mission-based business that we have as well. And uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. And the reason why I mentioned about a Miami Beach kid coming to Coral Gables, because right. I remember when I grew up on Miami Beach back in the day, I don't, I, I, you know, it was hard to find out where Coral Gables was. And the beauty of Gallery Night is it draws people into Coral Gables, maybe for the first time, and then they come back, which is. And it's I kept its authenticity so it's long. It's kept That's a really lot cool. of authenticity, yeah. and uh, and other communities like Wynwood, Miami Beach, others have kind of emulated this gallery night. Right. And a lot of them are doing gallery nights now as well. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a man. pleasure. Yeah, you're awesome. I've been a big fan of yours for a long time. Oh, man, so now the pressure is really It's great on. to meet you in person. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. We had a great time here at Books and Books. And uh, time to read. Peace. 
Thanks for joining us on Art Loft. Find us on social media at Art Loft SFL, where you can connect with us anytime. For Art Loft, I'm Jamani Anambi. Now remember, art imitates life, so do what? Live a beautiful life. Peace. Funding for Art Loft is made possible by Friends of Art, Friends of South Florida PBS, the Josephine S. Lizer Foundation, the City of Coral Gables, the Lilly Endowment, and Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. Support for Art Loft was provided by a grant from the Coral Gables Community Foundation. This project is sponsored in part by the State of Florida, Department of State, Division of Cultural Affairs, and the Florida Council on Arts and Culture.